good morning church maybe good afternoon good morning fine what a blessing it is for us that on this new year 2020 we have an opportunity to come to the church lift up our voices and praise god and thank god for all the good things that he has done to us so we need to be thankful to god the lord was good to us all through the year 2019 taking care of us and so this morning let's all together say goodbye to the year 2019 and then let us say welcome to the year 2020 Do you know one thing there are many people in this world who have said goodbye no more to see the dawn of another day how blessed it is for us on the first sabbath of the year 2020 we have an opportunity to come into the presence of god and then place our lives into hand and worship him i would like to start my little message with a testimony as my wife told i had two major fall this year last year 2019 one was at ahmedabad one was at Yashwantpur. I just want to narrate to you the incident that took place in Yashwantpur. I was supposed to go for a emergency crusade at Bidar Kumnar Pali. Elder Krishnamurthy had given me a gift to give to the church that is the communion set. I was carrying the communion set. Along with that I carried my suitcase and my bag and then I was I was close to the Yashwantpur railway station. I think the baggage was heavy then I thought let me take the escalator and then go up quickly. So I took my suitcase and the communion set and my bag and then stepped into the escalator. As I stepped into the escalator I don't know what happened suddenly the communion set slipped out of my hand then i thought i wanted to hold that so i left my suitcase and held that communion set by then the suitcase went down then the bag and then you can see this escalator it goes up the bag and the communion set they are tumbling along with that i was having a summer salt one round there are edges escalator were there edges or there steps were there one round i went round i don't know where i was going what was happening to me the second round i felt really dizzy i didn't know what's happening the third round fourth the steps were there and it's going up and i was going down nobody was there near me and lo and behold i thought finish that's the end of my life just i uttered a small prayer to lord i'm going to your work let your will be done so saying as i said the prayer you believe it or not two young people i don't know from where they came like angels they came and lifted me up and carried me and then went up to the you know station and there was a chair they made me to sit on the chair so saying then they went down to the from the elevator and then picked up my bags and brought and kept it near my side and said sir we'll come back and take these things for you to go to the train so they left the place and went away you believe it or not as this tumbling was taking place the edges of that ele- escalator you know they went deep into my back the blood was oozing out of my back and my shirt was 
wet it was blood lot of blood i don't know what to do i could not believe it i think literally around 10 minutes i took rest and then i saw my watch still there was another 10 minutes for me to go and board the train i prayed a prayer god give me strength so saying i took my baggage slowly went again went at went to the fifth platform boarded the bogey where i'm supposed to go i went and kept my things and i just lay flat on the you know that seats which are there as i sat there as i slept there the pain was so much but nevertheless lord i leave it to your hand you believe it or not whole night i suffered early morning 6 6:30 i reached by then the driver from north karnataka region bidar came and picked up my baggage and i told him the incident immediately he rushed to the day what do you call this nearby medical store he brought the spirit he brought the cotton he brought the medicine immediately wiped all my bed to move the shirt and threw it and then he told me to rest for another 2 3 hours after that he came back and saw me and he gave me food what a experience it is my friend if at all if i am standing today here in front of you it's purely because the lord was merciful to me if it was not for his goodness towards me i would not be standing here and witnessing for you likewise many of you if at all if you are to ask you you would say the same thing the lord was very wonderful and he has taken care of you perhaps you must have lost your job you can have the country is going down cost of onion 150 rupees lpg gas 20 rupees more increased but still we need to be thankful colossians 4:2 says continue in prayer in all circumstances sometimes good things happen sometimes bad things happen don't be disappointed look forward keep going god is with you sometimes you might have lost your health or loved one we need to thank to god whatever may happen thank god for the blessings that he has given the wealth and the power and the riches the good health everything is from god so we need to be thankful to god thank god for the people in your life your wife your children your home your relatives i think we need to be thankful to god thank god in the midst of trials and even persecution thank god especially for his salvation in jesus christ thank god for his continued presence and power in your life do you know the joy of personal relationship with god through jesus christ if you will turn to god he can take away the bitterness and give you the spirit of true thankfulness what a blessing it is yes my dear church our tall circumstances we need to be thankful to god we need to continue to praise god because it is god who has given us the life and as long as the breath is there in our life there's nothing but to praise god and thank god for his goodness well this morning god is inviting for a banquet the first part of the banquet the ordinance of feet washing the ordinance of feet washing invitation for banquet this was one of the last commandment given by our lord before he sealed the new testament with his own blood first commandment which was given when you compare john 13 chapter was 26 and matthew 26 20 to 28 these texts are associated with the holy communion or the last supper purpose of feet washing it is a memorial of the great sacrifice christ made when he took the form of the servant 
or a slave. Philippians 2.7 If we turn to Desire of Ages 22, paragraph 2, it says, God did not ordain that sin should exist. He foresaw its existence and made a provision to meet the terrible emergency, my friends. John 3.16, which all of us know, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but all should come to repentance, my friends. His love for mankind was so great, he covenanted to give his only begotten son whosoever believeth him, he should not perish. This is what God's wish was. When it comes to feet washing, none of the disciples wanted to do this menial act. Washing feet, some other's feet, is something that is very me. They didn't want to do that. Each of them wanted to compare themselves with other disciples. In what way I am lesser to X, Y, Z, or John, or Philip, or whoever it is. They were trying to compare themselves. Selfishness, self-ego, pride, jealousy, hatred was very much within their life. They wanted to show that they were more superior to others. What about us? Don't you think we have this menial nature in us? So Christ himself took the towel and tied to his waist and started washing the disciples' feet. When he came near Simon Peter, No, Lord, you are not washing my feet. Being a guru, he didn't want him to be washing the feet of Peter. No, Lord, you are not washing my feet. So Christ said, What I do, thou knowest not now, but thou should know hereafter. What I am doing now, you will not understand, my friend Peter. You will come to understand a little later. And so, he started washing the feet. Peter said to Jesus, My feet, but also my hands, my Lord, my head, why only feet? In John 3, 10, it says, He that is washed needeth not same, but he is clean and white, and are clean, but not are all clean. All of us who are here are not clean, so it needs cleansing. John 13, 14 says, If I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, ye you also ought to wash one another's feet. This is a command, this is a direction, this is a counsel given to us as a church, my friends. If I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, ye you also ought to wash one other feast. In Desire of Ages 6, 44, 45, this action opened the eyes of the disciples' bitterness, shame, humiliation. You know, this opened their eyes. They did not expect that Jesus would take the towel and start washing the feet of disciples. They understood the unspoken rebuke and saw themselves in altogether a new life so expressed in love for disciples. Their selfish spirit filled with sorrow but he entered into no controversy with them, my friends. This are pages 650 says, By this act, he was teaching them the lesson of humility and service. It brought dignity and honor to an act of service, my friends. Without this ordinance, we could not fully understand Christian humility. It is a test of our true attitude to one another, my friends. What an example it was. A selfless man took, on, took upon the form of a servant and he started washing the disciples' feet. If I as a master can wash your feet, you have to wash one another's feet. And so this morning, my dear church, this is the counsel comes to us. 
from the Lord, from the spirit of prophecy, that we need to adhere to his instruction. Now I would like to invite you to the second part. What is this holy communion? Some of you must be thinking, what is this holy communion? According to the Bible, Christians partake of holy communion in remembrance of the body and blood of Jesus Christ that was broken and shed at the cross. I think that we all of us know. Taking the Holy Communion does not only remind of his sufferings, but also shows us the amount of love he had for mankind, my friends. This service shows us as to how much he loved mankind. It says, it's a memorial of great sacrifice made but once on the cross of Calvary. Luke 22, 19, it says, And he took bread and gave thanks and break it and gave it to them saying, This is my body which is given for you this day in remembrance of me. If we turn to the Spirit of Prophecy, this are pages 651 page. It says, Those who receive in the spirit of service, it can never become a mere ceremonial act. Its constant lesson will be love, serve one another. Whenever this ordinance is celebrated, the children of God are brought into a holy relationship to help and to bless each other. The covenant that the life shall be given to unselfish ministry and this not only for one another, the field of labor. My friends, the field is wide. Laborers are free. I think the time has come that we need to share the love of God to the people, to the kinder and tongue and nation. The Lord did not come only to the Adventist church, my friends. The Lord did not come to to the believers in only high street church. He loved the mankind. It says, whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Now the next question could be, who can participate in this holy communion? Many people have this doubt. Can I participate in this communion? Is it for me? Sometimes some strangers come here. You know, they also ask this question. It says, All who believe that Christ died for them can participate in the Holy Communion according to the Holy Scriptures. Who is that? All who believe that Christ died for them and they are accepting the fact that Christ died for them and through him we have the hope of salvation can participate in this Holy Communion. This is a command of the Lord, my friends. And also one more very startling statement is given here. It says, No Israelite who was exempted from eating the Passover. What is referring to Israelite? Who is this Israelite? It is you and my, me, my friends. It is the church of God. That we are the spiritual Israel. None of us are exempted from taking part in the Holy Communion. None of us should leave this place without participating in the Holy Communion. Because this is a command from the Lord. It is not from any mankind, my friends. If at all, if you have done that to you, you ought to do it unto your fellow brothers and sisters. This is a command, my friends. And so, it is an invitation for all of us. We can participate. It says, Christ died for all and for that every reason. We have no right to forbid anyone who wants to take part in the Lord's Supper. Christ died for every one of us. And so nobody has the rights to say that you should take part and you should not take part. My friends, your relationship with God is most important. Your, your connection, constant connection with God is most important. Outward, you might not be looking nice, but as an individual, your relationship with God is something superior, my friend. God knows your heart. Yes. God knows us. Each of us who are seated here. And so this afternoon,
the Lord is inviting each one of us for a banquet. Galatians 2.28 says, I am crucified with Christ, Apostle Paul says. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I, which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Yes, my friends, what a testament that Apostle Paul is giving to us. In the spirit of complete reconciliation with our fellow brothers, we need to come to the Lord. We need to come to the Lord. My friends, this morning, I would like to take your imagination to that ragged cross where Jesus Christ was crucified. I had the privilege of visiting, visiting this Golgotha called the skull. It's all in the form of a skull. Not once, twice I visited this place. I would like to take your imagination to that Mount Calvary, my friends. And here, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ did something which we can never forget in our life. If it was not for Him coming to this world, taking the human form and then going through the life and showing the life to us and in turn you can live in this world without committing sin. This is And so I want to direct your, call your imagination back to the Mount Calvary. We are blessed to have young people in our church. My friends, if the work of God has to go forward, it is the end people, my friends. We have to just give them an opportunity and they would carry on the work which God has left behind. And so I would like to invite the high street HSO to come front and they in turn will sing to us a song which clearly explains to us as to how Christ suffered on the cross of Calvary, how he went through the pain and agony on a hill far away. You know, that's a song, a beautiful song which depicts Christ Jesus Christ's sacrifice on the cross of Calvary. Young people, it just so. <laughs> Someday to my own.
no more. I'll still cling to the old rugged cross. So I cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. Thank you, young people, for seeing that melodious song. It lifted our voices and our thinking to Christ Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary. This afternoon, my friends, I would like to direct your attention to Christ while he hung on the cross. He repeated seven last words. Meditation on the seven last words of Jesus Christ on the cross. When you think of the suffering Jesus Christ went through on the cross of Calvary, it is nothing but mind-boggling. It is nothing but deep in the significance, you know, something to know and to talk about. They have the capacity to take us into the very heart of Jesus as he died on the cross of Calvary, my friends. They have the ability to release the power of the cross into our daily living and give us the opportunity to prepare us for the end time tribulation. We are living in the end time, my friends. It's an opportunity for us. They touch us deeply as we think upon the seven last words Jesus Christ uttered. On the cross of Calvary, it touches very deeply. Christ in his humility, patience, perseverance, love, passion, and death has set an example for us, my friends. Love is the root of all virtues, my friends. Love finds a place everywhere in God, in Christ. And it should find a place in our lives as well, my friends. The first word that Jesus Christ uttered while he hung on the cross of Calvary, my friends, is found in Luke 23, 34. It says, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they are doing. This is a statement of forgiveness and prayer, my friends. He not only forgives, to ask the Lord to forgive. He was praying, Father, they don't know what they're doing, my Father. Please forgive them. This is the first statement Jesus made while he hung on the cross, my friends. Before Jesus was nailed to the cross, this statement was made. He was flogged. He was whipped, which had bits of bones or metal of embedded into it. Can you imagine as I rolled in that escalator? You know, that sharp edges just poked my back and the blood was oozing out of my body. Similar to that, in the olden days, when they whipped a person, they had a hook attached to the whip. And they whipped him, my friends. You see that the blood was just flowing out of his body. Soldiers mocked and beat Jesus Christ. For they says, crown of thorns were laid on his head. They beat him and spit him on his face. What a ridiculous thing the king of universe experiencing. He was forced to carry his own cross. When I was in that you know, place where Jesus walked, carried his cross, when I went with another group, one young man, he took the cross which was there and he carried all through that road. In expressing the agony. And you want to tell that Jesus, you have support for me. What an experience it is. 
He forced. He was forced to carry a stone cross. He could not carry. The weight was so much. It was not his own weight, my friends. It is the sins of mankind. It was so heavy that he could not bear. As he was going carrying that cross, we see that he falls down. During that time, with that Simon coming to his rescue, Jesus was executed publicly, my friends. Further, we see that every moment of struggle was watched by the crowd. After being betrayed, falsely convicted, beaten, spat upon, unjustly nailed to the cross to die an agonizing death. What a death it was, my friends. Jesus never harbored no hatred for his tormentors, but offered them forgiveness. What is our status? What is our nature? If my fellow brother does something little harm to me, I want to wait for an opportunity to take revenge on that person. But Jesus was not of this nature, my friend. says, Jesus never harbored no hatred for his tormentors, but offered them forgiveness. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. His first words from the cross, Father, forgive them for they know not what they are doing. What a matchless character Jesus was. That was the first word that was uttered on the cross of Calvary. There are some spiritual lessons that we can learn from this. What are the spiritual lessons that we can learn from this first word? It says, forgiveness reaches out to this undeserving. My friends, you and I were said it here, we don't deserve that. We don't deserve to call God from our mouth. We are sinful. He says, forgiveness reaches out to those undeserving. We have to forgive others just as Jesus forgave. forgave. Many times we don't do this, my friends. He says, are you harboring any bitterness and anger against someone who did you wrong? Are you waiting for a taken up opportunity to vengeance upon your brother? My friends, the scripture says very clearly, vengeance belongs unto God. Like Christ forgave your fellow brothers and sisters. My friends, it is your duty and my duty. He is inviting us today as we partake of this banquet. We need to forgive one another. Very important, my friends. It says we must forgive others because God forgave us. Swami Vivekananda makes a very startling statement. Please take note of this statement. Beautiful it is. The statement is like this. Mind is not, what is that? What is that? Dustbin. What goes into the dustbin? What goes? The trash. It says, mind is not a dustbin to keep anger, hatred, jealousy, but it is the treasure box to keep love, happiness and sweet memories, my friends. A Hindu philosopher can make a statement of this nature. When Jesus Christ, our Lord, King of Kings, and the Lord of the Universe, He has given us a model, a character, and He has lived a life and showed us that we should not harbor any anger upon a brother. It's not a dustbin. It's a place where we keep good memories, happiness, joy, the love of God. What a beautiful thing this. We praise God for this statement. Let's go into the second word. Christ uttered on the cross of Calvary. As he hung on the cross, the second word he uttered. You know, today you will be in paradise with me. In Luke 23, 39, that's what it says. Who said this? One of the criminals hanging there. Through insult at him. Aren't you Messiah? Save yourself and save me. Sometimes we also ridicule our fellow brothers. What sir? You are like this. You are a big man in the church. You are only going through this painful experience. 
come on, finish it. We talk this way. That's what the criminal was telling to Jesus Christ. He was telling that you are a messiah. Why don't you save yourself and save us? The second man says, the other rebuked him, don't you fear God? Next statement says, have you ever compared yourself to two thieves who hung on the cross? How much are we like the second thief? He recognized Jesus and what he could do for him. Are we as a church, do we recognize Jesus Christ that he is the hope of salvation? Through him, we have the life. He conquered death. And those of us <coughs> who believe and die, you and I can conquer death. Those of us who are here, who are suffering with different sickness, <coughs> By his very touch, he healed. This morning, I'm extremely happy to see my friend, Ramesh Gaikwad. Praise God for your life, Ramesh. Keep it up. God is with you. Don't be ever worried. I know God has a place for you. And we have been praying for you. And the Lord will take care of you. God will do miracles. Even in 21st century, my friends, you can experience miracles. I was having hiccups for more than 15 days, I went to doctors, all sorts of treatment, endoscopy, that scopy, this scopy, everything was over. Finally, with a bill of 10,000 rupees, they told my wife, you take your husband, that's all, he's going to die. My wife took me back to the house and lo and behold, she was a prayer warrior. She continued praying without anybody's knowledge for three days and three nights. And lo and behold, on the third day, I just vomited something bitter, something black. That spur of the minute, that hiccup stopped. My friends, God can do miracles. One of our Kannada church members who had hiccups like me, he expired. Then I thought, I'll be the next person in that graveside. I'll be sleeping by the side of him. Yes, my friends. I want to tell you one thing, don't you worry, don't be discouraged about death. It says, death is a gateway to heaven, I'll come to that. So let's be, he has conquered death. And let's be positive, let's look up to Jesus Christ, because he will give us the strength. It says, he said to Jesus, remember me, Jesus, when you come as a king. Jesus said, thou shalt be there with me in paradise. What a blessing, what a blessing it was. The third word, woman, here is your son. Here is your mother, John 19, 25, 27. Jesus Christ called his mother Mary and said, woman, here is your son. Here is your mother. Jesus showed divine love for his mother. My dear young people who are in the church today, do you have concern for your fathers and mothers today? There is a lesson for us that we need to learn. While Jesus Christ was hanging on the cross, he did not forget his earthly mother, my friends. He wanted to see that the mother was safe and sound. Do you have a concern for your parents? This is a question this morning. He says, Jesus' duty as the oldest son to provide for his mother and family members, not only our parents, what about our family, our brothers, our sisters? If they're in difficulties, in what way can you be a helpful to them? His mother's care was left into the hands of the beloved disciple. Who is that? John. Why Mary was given into the hands of John rather than Jesus' brothers and sisters? Have you thought of this? Anybody? I think there are brother, brothers and sisters. The Bible says very clearly. Instead of giving, handing over his mother to those brothers, he handed over his mother to G. What is this? John the Beloved. Why? Have you thought of this? There is a text which tells. Please note down this. If you have your Bibles, one of you should read loudly so that you will understand. John the seventh chapter was five. Please read, please. One of you. John the seventh chapter. Verse 5, let us see what it says there. If you have your Bibles, turn to the book of John. There the answer is there. 
why Jesus Christ left his mother into the hands of John the Beloved. Yeah, read loudly. Neither his brothers believed that Jesus is the Messiah. None of his brothers and sisters, descendants, believed that he was the Messiah. And that's the reason we see here, my friends, Jesus Christ is telling beloved John, Behold, mother, this is your son. Behold, son, this is your mother. Yes, my friends, sometimes we have our own descendants, our own siblings, and our latest blood brothers, but they don't believe what you believe. What a sad it is. All right. While hanging on the cross, he said to his mother, Dear woman, here is your son, verse 27. And to the disciple, here is your mother. What a command was. It's not the physical descendants important. French, it says here, spiritual descendant is the most important thing. One who believes Christ and accepts his forgiveness. Even though you might be a born to Abraham or Jacob, Isaac, you might be a descendant. If you don't believe in the Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ, you are not a Israel, my friends. We are called the spiritual Israel. We are the descendants of Abraham. We are the descendants of Jewish community. Jesus Christ, my friends. And so, we need to be acknowledged accordingly. The fourth word, let's come to the fourth word, my friends. It's found in Mark, Matthew 27, 46, Mark 15, 34. It says, My God, my God, why has you forgotten me, forsaken me? Many times, when problems, difficulties, situations come, which you cannot bear, Lord, why this trouble for me? You remember Job? He said, Lord, what's happening to me? But he never cursed God. He never cursed God. What a spirit it was. It says here, this is the fourth word, Jesus Christ assured from the cross of Calvary. He says, And about three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? This is the statement which Jesus Christ made on the cross of Calvary. Our Lord is speaking here of a spiritual abandonment, a spiritual forsaking of the Father, my friends. To be forsaken by God is to suffer the pangs and torments of hell. Hell is the complete absence of God. Does God forsake us? God says, I will, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. Because of our sins, Christ felt the separation. He has paid the price for our redemption. Let's come to the fifth word, my friends. That Christ offered as he hung on the cross of Calvary. You see that the fifth word, this is what he said in John 19, 28. He said, I thirst. What did he say? I thirst. The statement indicates his physical condition and need. It says here, here is Jesus, the creator of all rivers and springs of the universe. Now dying man without water to drink. The rivers and the blue brooks and the lakes that we have in this world, it is he who created. But here Jesus Christ hanging on the cross, he says, I thirst. What a pathetic situation. What does he mean when he says, I thirst? He says, last time Jesus had anything to drink was to at the Last Supper. I had the privilege of going to the upper room where Christ had the Last Supper. You know, the only time he had to drink was when he had the supper with the disciples. He says, Garden of Gethsemane, his sweet, his sweat was like the drops of blood. I did have the privilege of going to Garden of Gethsemane. It's a beautiful place. I saw the place where Jesus Christ knelt and spent the whole night in prayer, asking God, give me strength to bear this separation between you and me, to bear the sins of this world. My friends, if you need power, if you need spiritual strength, 
we need to go to the garden of gethsemane the altar of prayer in your own homes not necessarily you have to go to the garden of gethsemane spend time in prayer and meditation god is going to give you spiritual strength to face the onslaughts of life my friends this message of his word more than just physical thirst jesus thirst for souls he was not physically thirsty still it was thirsty but much more than that he was thirsty for the souls he was concerned about you and me my friends and that's the reason we notice that john 316 because whosoever believeth in him should not perish that's why he came down to this earth he was thirsty for souls my friends second we have to witness to the glorious message of redemption we need to tell the world reach into the world and tell the people prepare the people for the soon coming of lord jesus christ christ is going to come soon we don't know the hour we don't know the time but his coming is sooner than ever before when you don't think of coming he will come my friend we should be ready and so we need to carry this message jesus took upon himself the spiritual thirst of all those who fear god has filled them let's come to the sixth word is found in john 19 30 he says jesus said it is finished what is say it is finished john 1930 with that he bowed his head and gave up his spirit what a agony it was for no reason he was there in that cruel cross going through the pain suffering death what do you mean by this god always finishes what he begins my friends god created this universe he did not ordain sin into should come into the existence but he foresaw that's what this great convert says this apostle says and then he prepared a plan of salvation and it's because of that you and i have the hope of salvation if it was not for that we would be completely doomed my friends it says God always finishes that what he begins is that Jesus Christ is the alpha and the omega the beginning and the end revelation 1:8 the work for which he had come to this world is over what was the work saving mankind giving his very life to save mankind he could he could shout triumphantly from the cross it is finished he has done yes my friend it was a victorious thing christ went through that agony for your sake and my sake he has worked completely and perfectly that's why we are confident of our salvation today jesus reported to god that he had finished his work his fight with sin is over This is what he did. Let's come to the seventh and the last word that Jesus Christ offered as he hung on the cross of Calvary. He says, "Father, into your hands I commit my spirit." This is the statement that Christ made while he hung on the cross of Calvary, my friends. "Father, into your hand I commit my spirit." Last words of the dying are important. I think. we must have noticed when our fathers our mothers or maybe our relatives when they're dying the last statement statement they make it becomes very very important to us a grandparents they die that's what happened in the lives of many people here is it dl modi said this is my coronation day <coughs> while he was dying he said what this is my coronation day last words of dl modi when when he crossed by said i am going to heaven this is the last words he made i am going to heaven last words billy graham maternal grand mother said i see jesus he has his arms outstretched toward me how many of our parents you know lived a godly life and they have witnessed this we see that billy graham's 
maternal grandmother this was i say jesus he arms are outstretched i am prepared to die i am prepared to go to the kingdom of god this is the last words that pilgrim's grandmother made the last words of jesus christ what was that father into your hands i commit my spirit what a commitment it is my friends this afternoon like jesus christ are you willing to commit your lives into the hand are you willing to partake of the banquet which christ has prepared for you so that you can remember his birth his death on the cross of calvary the suffering that he went through and that he is come again that is going to take us back to heaven when he comes the second time do you ac- do you want to accept this little information what god has given to us it was a life of communion with god he had peace because he had fellowship with god at death jesus is coming committing himself into the hands of the father tell us how tell us we can commit our lives fully into the hands of his son when jesus himself has committed his life into the hand of god what about you and me we need to fully surrender ourselves into the hands of god service of mother teresa have you seen that i think some of you have visited ato raja he wants to be little mother teresa dying destitute people with leprosy people with sickness he carries them i believe there are more than 10 to 20 people die every day in his hand he dresses the wounds my friends where are we are we in the comfortable zone can you recognize the sufferings of jesus christ the agony that he went through he is concerned about the every soul that is there in this world my friends not only you and me so we need to be careful mother teresa service is very much acknowledged death is the gateway to the father never never be worried about death sometimes we do not know what will happen to us today i'll be speaking tomorrow we don't know what will happen my friends we have many pioneers who made different statements we know their lives how they have gone through them this final word reveals to us the secret of victorious living in dying if you want to experience christ way of life follow lord jesus christ lord supper holy communion involves fourfold act of devotion the first one is there is an act of self examination before you come to the tape temple i'm sorry table we need to examine ourselves and rectify ourselves if at all if there's any sin in our lives please ask forgiveness from the lord repent of our sins not only individual sins my friend other day when dr uh, samraj when he spoke on the new year day he said a statement we need a, a corporate forgiveness from god a corporate repentance from god very important why the church is cold today because we don't have this real love genuine love within us my friends the church is calling upon you today that we need to have a individual repentance and also a corporate repentance the church we need to repent of our sins when god called jonah go and preach to nineveh he went to tashis and again god called him back go back and preach when he went and preached we see that the whole Nineveh town people, you know, repented of the sins. They wore the sackcloth and then repented and confessed the sins. What they did, my friends, as a church, high street church, the Lord is inviting us today. Whatever the differences you have today, with any of your brothers and sisters, let us put it aside. Let us bury it. Leave it behind. 2019. Let us reach out unto our fellow brothers and sisters, shake hand and invite them. when you go to the communion service when you go to the you know what do you call this uh, washing of the feet many times i notice that only friends and friends wash their feet 
This is not what God wants. My friends, if you think that you have done something, you go right to that person, ask forgiveness, take him by the hand and go and wash his feet. That is real Christianity, my friends. If you don't do this, woe unto us, my friends. There's a beautiful thought is given to us in the scripture. All right? There's an act of self-examination. Next one, it says, there's also the act of dependence. Jesus is the bread and the wine. And also it says, there is also the act of remembrance of the Lord's death. It reveals that Christ died for us, participate in the Holy Communion. There is also the act of hope that Christ is going to come soon. Till he comes, the Lord said, do this in remembrance of me. Do this in remembrance of me. Holy Communion consists of two parts, as I said. Feet washing service, our true attitude toward one another. It is also a reminder we must be clean when approaching the Lord's table, my friends. If at all, if anything is there in our heart, bury it beneath. Ask God's forgiveness. Kneel down and place it before God. Lord, forgive me. And go to your brother and say, forgive my brother. Let's have a new life. We have shot. God has given us an opportunity. 2020 is yours and mine. How are you going to spend 2020 is a question that God asks us today. An opportunity is given to us. Lord's Supper symbolizes God's means of atonement for our sins. We cannot claim to love Jesus and refrain from the great memorial for his love for us, my friends. Very important. Billy Graham. No, he made this startling statement. Before I conclude, I read the statement. Once again, I want to take your imagination back to the old rugged cross. Our young people, you know, came and sang that beautiful song here, my friends. I believe on that rugged cross. I think you and I need to believe that Jesus Christ is the risen Savior. The reason why Jesus did not hand over his mother to his brothers and sisters, they did not accept that he is the Messiah, my friends. And thus he said, John, behold your mother. And then to John, behold your son. My friends, today, God is calling. This is what Billy Graham says. Beautiful statement. Please take it. The last statement, I'm reading to you. It says, God proved his love on the cross. When Christ hung and bled, it was God saying to the world, I love you. God saying to the world, I love you. My friends, it's because of his love that he had to make this sacrifice. What a sacrifice. And so this morning, church, I want to invite each one of you to surrender yourself to God. Ms. Rejewite says, if at all if you want to experience a real close relationship with God, spend at least 10 to 15 minutes, you know, meditating on the life of Jesus Christ and his experience on the cross. When you do this, God will give you the newness of God. The love Jesus has you. What a beautiful opportunity. God has given us an opportunity to participate in the banquet. Let's all participate and come back for the Holy Communion, the bread and the wine. God bless you.